Brewed territory is back. Braun and Kraft, this is all about the Brewers. So if you don't like them, get out. No, I'm just kidding. But this team took on Otani and the Angels this past weekend. Not a team you generally want to run into early on in the season, Kratzy, but they took it to them. They won two out of three. Good for them. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, everyone's going to talk about the Shohei homer, but Brewers just keep chugging along and taking down a team that's an over 500 team right now. So great, great series win. Yeah, conversations this week on Brew Crew Territory include Brewers broadcasters, yes, plural, Jeff Levering, and a separate conversation with Vinny Rotino on where this team is at right now, and also where the Cardinals are at, because that's the big rivalry for them, of course, and they're looking way down in the division right now, being like, whoa, they're down there after the first month. And we started with Rowdy Telez, the legend, joining us. Rowdy in the car, but not driving. Just want to be clear with everyone, no, no. okay? <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not driving. We're waiting for people, dropping people off for appointments. All good, perfect. Rowdy, how you doing? And I just want to carry this conversation to you for a second. How shocked are you that the Cardinals are this bad right now? Um, I mean, you guys know season's long. Anything could happen. It's a long season. I mean, you look at it. We played we played Nolan um, early in the season, and he was struggling, and he's struggling now, but. You flip over his baseball card, he's got 30 and 100 every year. So I don't think you got to – you're not looking at these first 30 games as anything crazy. You know, it's just one of those where it's like, hey, they're, they're struggling and, um, you know, they're not really bonding. Uh, like I heard you guys saying, they're kind of rotating a lot of guys in and out. So uh, it is what it is. But um, for the Brewers, it's it's a good sign. As I say, get down around <laughs> You're cheering that they're just bad because it gives you guys – you guys start piling up games like you've done. Also – do you have any other hat than the Carhartt hat? Because didn't you wear that last time you were on with us? He's a sponsor. Oh, you're sponsored by. No, I don't know. I'm making oh. that up. I mean, I do have a lot of Carhartt stuff. It gets cold when I go hunting, so they kind of maybe give me a discount or maybe throw me some stuff. But if you <laughs> like got a problem with it, you always no, no, wear no. The black I like it. Backwards. I like it. I was going to tell him. No, I was going to have you. Well, I have to wear the same hat every day, so that's why I was kind of jealous. Wear it forward though, because well, it covers my eyes. I don't want to <laughs> cover the baby blues, you know. <laughs> I was wondering if you could send one to Kratz, and if you did send one, would it fit on his big head? You know what? I do talk a lot of shit about Kratzy, but I got a, I got a dome, too. Uh, you paint this thing up, it looks like a basketball. So I can't really I can't really go at him. I mean, he's got a great haircut, though. I'll give him that. He's got a good haircut. Okay. No does, doubt. No does doubt. Does the Ball cheese brothers. head fit you? Does the yeah. cheese head – did they get a special cheese head for you? Looks like a that cheese head. Fun. That thing's – that's brutal, huh? It looks tiny. It does. <laughs> like it's not it's not a good look for the big fella. The kid, it's I mean look, it looks like a cheese it. You know, it looks like, it's terrible. You know them little egg crates you'd sleep on in the minor leagues when you were grinding? Like yep. that's what it looked like. Someone just cut it out of there. Have you given it we had Freddie Peralta on and we asked him if a pitcher is ever going to get, were you going to let a pitcher wear that at some point this year? No, they don't deserve it. We're going <laughs> to keep it for the guys that, that do damage. <laughs> so if Freddie shoves goes eight or, or Corbin goes eight or even a shutout, you won't throw that on their head. It's only for hitters. Yeah, man, they got, they got to hit a home run. They don't do <laughs> I don't that think that's happening anytime soon. Is there a DH in the yeah. National League? Yes. I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> hey, speaking of winning things. All right. So, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit more invested in the Brewers with our whole Brew Crew show. So you guys are kind of like my you guys are my guy. But but I'm watching some I'm watching some post game interviews, and I want to throw out some numbers for you. And I want you to tell me what these numbers are. Twenty three point five, twenty four point eight, twenty three point one, and twenty three point eight. Do you know what those numbers are? Yes, yeah, that's four people's sprint speeds, and I better hope mine's the highest. It's not. I'll tell you who the four people are, all right? Because everybody who's not the national people who are not watching this, Rowdy has been, he's been watching, you know, he's been saying he's faster than Luke Voigt, and he brought Jesse Winker in like it was like, like it was like some kind of like rap, like standoff or something. Like Jesse Winker didn't even do nothing, and he just brought him into it. He said, yeah, I'm faster than Jesse Winker. So Rowdy's saying he's faster than those two, those two guys. Well, Rowdy Telez is second slowest on this entire list with a 23.5 sprint speed. Okay. Hey, 
It's all about Jesse the Winker's last. Jesse Winker's last. And guess who's ahead of you? Luke. Luke Voigt and me. My last year of my career. So <laughs> wear that, Keith. Yeah, man. That, you know what? They must be getting sprint speeds from them like three U's where I don't run hard. And I mean, I don't. Ground out the first, I'm not running hard. That's just not happening. What I'm on block. Triple? It's like Miller trying to go uphill, man. You just you slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> what, what will it take to beat Kratz in a race besides money? Triple? You hit a triple? Beat him now. <laughs> we can. Whoa. Hey, we're going to set this up for sure. We just need a, we just need a stat cast, kid. We just need a stat yeah. cast. All it, I've been working we, on is my sprint speed. Well, at least my stat cast still gets shown up on sprint speed. Yeah, exactly. I just need it. I need it at the house. <laughs> Man. Oh, we didn't hear what you said. You cut out. I said, well, they don't have those in Pennsylvania. That's like Amish country. You guys got some weird stuff out there. Hey, you better you better be careful talking about Pennsylvania. That's a little bit. You, no, you, I can't. I'm, I'm going there. We're, they know. They know, too. They, you know, he's got, he's got a, he's got a significant other in Pennsylvania. So you guys mm. need to. He needs to be careful. He's he's a little bit PG when he's talking about Pennsylvania because that's where his father-in-law lives. I want to go father-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got time. <laughs> got time. Fair, fair. Hey, oh. question for you. I was thinking about this in relation to you, you know, maybe eventually in free agency. Would you ever, and you played with him, I think, would you ever – say I don't like a particular team before you hit free agency your boy Vladdy Jr. was like yo the Yankees are dead to me did you see that when he called them out yeah I saw you know Ken Griffey said the same thing I think but um hey man money talks I'm gonna be honest I Yankees are towards the bottom though because I'd look like a little penis if I had to shave my face and wear a mustache <laughs> so, it's gonna be a tough look pinstripes are slimming so there's like plus and minuses to it, but I don't know if I can go no facial hair, to be honest. Come on. What did I say? Yeah. I, but I got roasted by the by the weirdo TikTok commenters that were like, how dare you ever challenge their facial hair policy? Most players hate it. It's stupid. Just let, let them be well, yourself. Yeah, I don't, I don't get why that's a thing. I mean, the Yankee way, and I get it, but like, dude, I, I mean, I feel like that really limits some guys. Like, I think some guys, like, I will not go to the Yankees because – I don't want to follow rules or like don't want to wear a certain cleats or I don't, you know, like the haircut thing. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I mean, like I said, money talks. Yeah. If they came to you and said, Hey, here's 20 extra million. You'd shave your face in five seconds and be <laughs> like, where do I sign? Dude, I'd look like an idiot for 20 extra million. <laughs> <laughs> we all would. Yeah, exactly. I might, we all would. I might grow my cul-de-sac hair right back out. Uh-oh. Wait, do you have – wait, can we take the hat off? What kind the of – The U. Kind of, He's got the it's U. Not, it's, well, it's fresh. It's fresh right now, so I got nothing going. It's a great but, but yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Straight line back. Really? Yeah, it's not good, dude. It's, it's really not, beautiful. It's not like the hair halo that, that kind of is a circle and you have a little spot left in the front still. It's just right in the middle. No, I do. I have a little spot right here that still grows. It's called the island. <laughs> I got those – um, it's tropical, but it's a good place though. Uh, but yeah, that, if I could let this go and have a full fryer tuck, it'd be pretty good. I know the, uh, the San Diego Padres mascot kind of wears me out about it. Cause he says we look the same. And so does my manager and bench coach. They tell me that's my brother. Um, but <laughs> it, it's part of it. Does the mascot actually talk to you? Like he comes up to you and says something. No, he looked at me in San Diego and he did the old, like, and then pointed at him and then back and forth. And I was like, hey, dude, hey, man, you might have a better body than me, but I bet you I could beat you in sprint speed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, could you beat could you beat Murph? Could you beat Pat Murphy, the bench coach for you guys? Could you beat him in the I had I had to say his whole name because oh. we talked about a player earlier that didn't know his bench coach's name. So I had mm. to say sure. Pat oh, Murphy, your bench coach. No, yeah. I could definitely beat Murph. Murph's a character. He's probably one of my favorite baseball people that I've come across in my entire time as a professional baseball player. He is a treat. I uh, I had popped out on like an 11 pitch at bat or something like that. 
versus the Red Sox, and I swung at like seven of them at my chin and kept fouling them off. And I came back in after I popped up the one that was a strike, and I was like, came in, and I was like, God damn it, dude, I'm swinging all these balls. What am I doing? I was like, probably like seven in a row. Murph goes, nah, it's like four, dude. He goes, but you can go sit down. And I was like, all right, Murph, shut the fuck up. <laughs> angry for a second. Did you? The now, next if day, it, and corrected, it was five. And then walked away from me. And I was like, all right, dude, thanks. I appreciate you just letting me fail on my own. Just <laughs> let me talk in my own pain. If you guys, if you and Voight and Winker have your race, have your people race, as you called it, would the loser put this up? No money, nothing like that. The loser has to take a bite of the bagel that Murph has for every day game. Because you know where he stores that bagel, or maybe he doesn't anymore <laughs> since he's healthy. Yeah, well, I, it's there. I don't know how often he does it every day game. He's gotten back-to-back. So I've been two opening days with the Brewers, and we've gotten people, and they have no idea. He'll do it in spring training early, wake the guys up. But, I mean, that would be a good one. Just walk up to Murph and say, hey, like, I need a bite of your bagel or something. Or pancake. That might be, that might that be some be- knocks. Tell people tell people where where Murph keeps the bagel. Keeps it in his pocket. No, he doesn't. You're front, such a liar. Front, front pocket. <laughs> 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 he, uh, that dude is... Is something else, man. And he just, he's like a drive. He's like one of the dudes where all, you know, all the, the utensils are out to pull out food and spread. And he's just like, oh, I got a hand. And I just like grabs it with his hand. But yeah, he does store his bagel in the front pocket of his sliders. So. Mmm, <laughs> that sounds delicious. Yeah, exactly. Murph is, Murph is That's legendary. That's how you toast it. <laughs> yeah, slightly toasted. Murph is legendary. He, as you've obviously seen the Jeff Frank core story when you had him in, in AAA. Yes. He told him, he had, told him he, the dude was deaf. It was deaf. Yes. Yes. That that is one of the. Have you heard that? Yes. Story? That yes. Is one, and if you ask Frenchie about it, he Frenchie is so nice and so. I don't want to say. I don't want to call Frenchie dumb, but he's so nice and so. Just naive. Gullible. Just gullible. Just naive. Just naive. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly naive. He's mm-hmm. gullible. They told this kid. They told Frenchie that this kid was deaf in AAA, and it lasted for like three months. It wasn't like a couple days. And, Fred, and finally, they told him, and Fred, no way. If you haven't seen it, Google yeah, it. Yeah, Google it. It's right, worth so your five I heard, minutes. I heard the story for the first time in, uh, when we were playing the Braves in the playoffs, and Frenchie was doing the broadcast. And we had Jace Peterson on our team, and Jace played with Frenchie on that team. So, like, something came up, and then the story came up, and I was like, the story goes through the whole thing, and I'm looking at Frenchie, and I'm like, dude, there's no way. Come on, man, like. Please tell me at some point you thought this is this isn't real. He's like, no, dude, I thought it was real. I was like, dude, let's have some common sense here. <laughs> but you're right. He's like so nice. It's just hard to like can't say anything to him. It was, just, it was just funny though. It's a great story. Murph's got a lot of good stories. So Murph was uh, Craig Council's head coach at Notre Dame when he played college baseball there. So I I got some good like I asked Council. I was like, hey man. How was Murph as a college coach? And he was like, hated him. Burning passion, hated the guy. And I was like, oh, so you hated him so much, you brought him back to be your bench coach for the last eight years. And he was like, yeah. 25 years apart does a lot of wonders. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did he, didn't he, he, he used to make, I swear, Pedro, I think he had Pedroia at ASU because he went from Notre Dame to ASU. Yep. Yeah, he did. And, he did. He had, and I think he used to make him, you ground out, and you'd have to run back and give the guy a high five that was coming up to the plate. So say you hit like a fly ball, and Murph had a rule where you had to run. Ask Murph today when you see him. Say you hit a fly ball, you'd have to run by the guy coming up and give him a high five or shake his hand. Why? I don't know. It was a weird, weird. Pedroia told us some weird stuff, I swear, about Murph where they had to like give him a high five. Maybe it's just screwing with players being like, I want to see him. <laughs> I what they'll they'll do. Listen to me. What can I get Rowdy to do yeah. tonight? Hmm. <laughs> I see you played for him. You know that, man. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me if he did something like that. It really wouldn't. Oh, for sure. He he would, would he would something. he definitely he's he's somebody we got to have on here for sure to round out would, our. He would love to. He's all yeah. about it. And then, I mean, this guy's like sixty something years old, and he talks shit like he's played twenty five years in the big leagues and <laughs> got he's got two pensions for some reason. He's been in the Hall of Fame. I don't do, and it is hilarious. Doesn't matter who. 
we call him the ambassador. He's the ambassador for the Brewers because whoever we play, he goes and talks to the best player on that team. That's what oh, he does. He's fearless. Yeah. He played the Angels and he was talking to Otani. And I looked at him, Murph, he doesn't know what the fuck you're saying, dude. And he was like, no, no, <laughs> universal. Life. I'm like, no, Murph, he doesn't even know you. What did he say to him? What did he have a conversation with Otani about? I don't know. He just, Otani's the best player on that team, probably, or Mike, who we call Mark Trout, because I just don't want him to know he's the best player in the game. So I do call him by his a wrong name. At first? Sometimes. I call Bryce Harper Bruce Harper, just to let him know. <laughs> Crafty, you knew that, you brought Scott. that up. Yeah, I you did. That, I did. What do they say when you say that to them? Um, usually they ask me if this is my first year playing. Or they say, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if okay. you give it out, you gotta be able to handle it. So no, I love that. Did, did you hear Roddy? Did you hear about this past week the White Sox broadcaster Steve Stone calling out Lance Lynn? And hey, White Sox have been going through some shit, but he was like, Oh, he needs to eat more salads, calling out Lynn. Did you hear about that? No, I did not. But you said the White Sox are going through some shit. Their announcer does say some dumb stuff too, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, AJ. I know you played there for a while, but like, I think it's, it's okay. a different announcer too, huh? No, it's the same one. Steve Stone. Same guy. A long time. Yeah, same guy. Yeah. Wears makeup everywhere he goes, 24 hours a day. Yeah, same guy. Really? Yeah, he said that Lance Lynn needs to work on his cardiovascular and mix in some salads. Not a salad, salads with an S. See, and now that's that's fine if you're saying it about yourself. Like, I drop, like, I need to eat some salads, which I do. It's not a big deal. Or, like, I told uh, I told Wolfie, the umpire, Jim Wolf, you know, you guys know him. He's jacked, wears the tightest shirt in, in any umpire. And I saw him, I was like, hey, man, you need to – you're looking a little little fat. And I sent over some candy bars. And in Milwaukee, like, you, the the clubhouse to the umpire's room is like, you can deliver it yourself, which I didn't. And then, so I sent over a couple of candy bars, and he, like, saw me and started laughing. And then the next day, he sent over a, a big old cup of shredded lettuce. And he goes, you could use this. And I was like, all right, dude. It's good. It's good, man, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think Lance is not too worried about his salad uh, consumption. I think he throws well enough. It's all about how you play on the field, right? Yeah, it don't matter how you look in a uni as long as you're putting up numbers. Absolutely, hitting dingers, which you are. But we had a guest on earlier, and I asked him. Well, we've had a couple of them. I asked him, "You got to take three teammates from your team. One you got to cut. One you got to trade." And one you got a room with. Who are the three from the Brewers for you? Dude, that's kind of – you guys always put me on the spot with these questions. It's just Kratz. He's a punk. It's just yeah. me. Yeah, notice I'm – I don't do that. We don't do that. Yeah. Just me. One teammate. I got to – trying to think. Kratz, you got tell put, who, you got who put called down, him out. You got put down for two of them already, so just so you know. Who was it? I'm not telling him. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to change his answer. I, I think Yelly's the one I'm going to room with. Because you what don't was, pay for anything. Exactly, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other two? Cut and what? Trade. Um. I'm gonna. Corbin Burns said it. What? I don't know. Somebody popped on the the screen. And said oh. um, whoa, that wasn't us. Whoa, That's the whoa. behind the scenes crew. Whoa, production whoa. staff outed. Don't be MLB editing shit. Wow, wow. this is this is Oakland A's all over. Wow. Oh my gosh. I would, was it was it a female cut, voice or a male voice? I would cut Eric Lauer. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to go. And then I think I would trade Garrett Mitchell. Okay. I think we can get some good TikTok stars in return for him. <laughs> Forget prospects. We want TikTok people. Uh, yeah. I we need it. entertainment. Hey, but Ryan, yeah, it was, it was Burns. Burns, yeah, Burns said, I just want to cut. I just want to cut Rowdy just because it sounds like fun. And I think he said he would have trade you because that would be fun too. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Burns, can have his time to shine. <laughs> I'll let, I mean, I'll let him have it. He's been he's been clowning on me for a while. Just wait till he throws one of those hundred mile an hour balls over to first, and I miss it again. <laughs> <laughs>
Did, did I hear um, a glove issue from this past weekend, and then you have a new assistant named Bryce Terang? Is that all true? Yeah, so, like, I've used the same glove my entire career until this year. It was the first year I've used a different glove. And I was just warming up the infield, first inning of the game, uh, yesterday. First inning of the game. And the hitter gets to the 3-2, and I look down at my glove to, like, pull the string to tighten it a little bit. No string. It's gone. There's, like, a hole in the middle of my, like, web. And I'm like, look at the umpire. I'm like, time. And he's like, do you want to take it now? And I'm like, yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> and he was like, well, the pitch is coming. And I was like, no, it's not. He's standing on the mound. So then the pitch happens. The kid fouls it off. And I'm like, time. I need a new glove. Bryce knew. I was, like, pointing at my glove. And Bryce knew exactly what I meant. So he goes running into my locker. And thank goodness my locker is the one closest to the kitchen, which, therefore, is closest to the field. And he grabs two gloves and comes running back out. And I was like, no, neither of those are broken in. They're just like gloves that are not really broken in. I was like, go grab my old gamer, the 10-year-old one. I was like, and it's in the box. So he pulls out like the glove box and he brings it out. And I, he flings it to me. And I run by the first base coach and he goes, that is the ugliest glove. And I was like, thanks, man. I didn't really need your opinion. But yeah, so I had this old crusty glove. I played with the rest of the game while I get my, my other one relaced. But. Yeah, I had to bring out Old Faithful. I was scared it was going to disintegrate. Things old. <laughs> well, but thanks to Bryce. Who was, the, who, who was the coach? Who, wait, first of all, who was the umpire? And why, uh, Gabe Morales. Uh, why, and why didn't they let you have time? You could is, is it only one disengagement from the first baseman per game or <laughs> one time uh, out per game? Yeah, I, think, I don't know. You know umpires, they want to have some control. He's just he's – just, he's sorry. He's just we get, sorry. We'll go that we, way. we get it. We get it. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, the coach was, uh, I don't know his first name, but Mayshore with uh, the Angels. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know his first name. Justin. Sure. Sure. I was say Damon. Wasn't there Great. a Damon Mayshore? Damon? Damon Mayshore didn't no, he play? I don't know. Oh. Johnny's down no. the street, but Damon. All right, I got one more because um, we haven't talked to you since. You continue to pulverize the Red Sox, and do you wish you played them more? So, I I do yes. Um, <laughs> Yankees, hey Yankees, play them all the time. Yeah, but, you know, Yankees play them the all shade. the time. It's not worth the I shade. told you I would I would trade looking like a penis for a lot of things. Probably <laughs> play the Red Sox a little bit more. Um, no, their media came up to me and he was like, one of their guys was like, "Do you like playing the Red Sox?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Why?" I was like, "I don't know. They they give up homers." And he was like. Yeah, but is there something about him? And I was like, no, it's just one of those teams, man. You just everybody's got one team that made them that much better. And he was like, yeah, but you seemingly just always do it against the Red Sox. And I was like, yeah, I really just don't like you. That's the issue. And the guy was like, <laughs> took it super serious. He was like, what do you mean? I've never talked to you. And I was like, yeah, it's just you, dude. It's, I mean, it's nothing against you, but you work for the Red Sox, so therefore I just I don't like you, so I don't like the Red Sox. And he got offended. And I was like. <laughs> Hey, man, at the end, I was like, it's a joke. Smile, laugh. You take your job way too serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect thing to say. He was about to write some, like, oh. breaking article, like, rowdy oh. targeting Red Sox oh, media. Oh, man, you were about to get destroyed yeah. by the yeah. Boston media. <laughs> Fat, bald, penis. It was 0 for 3 <laughs> in the last game. It would have been bad. They don't like Actually, me. Actually, would have upped your value, though, if, if they yeah. wrote that. Yankees would have been... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he calm. asked me, he was like, would you ever play for the Red Sox? He was like, that's one way to stop you. And I was like, no, because then I wouldn't be <laughs> good. I was like, I'll never play. Maybe that's <laughs> that would bring your I'd career numbers down. Yeah. yeah. You're perfect. You're perfect for the Brewers. You know you're perfect for the Brewers. Dude, I've inspired every 46-year-old plumber that goes out for a Sunday league game. He's like, I can do it. They all wear number 11 now, so they look even smaller because I have like Single ones, dude, do not look good on a, on my back. They just it's a big it's a big back. It's a it's a little skinny number. It doesn't work, but I I you know what? I roll with the punches, but I've inspired some real dudes that have blown out their hamstrings on their their Sunday league games thinking I could be rowdy to Les. Same hair, <laughs> same body. It's, all throughout all throughout Milwaukee. Speaking of Milwaukee, yeah. did you see the cheese race? Yeah. Do you want me to comment on it? I do want you to comment. <laughs> no, we don't. That was the dumbest thing I think I've seen on a baseball field in the big leagues. I've seen some dumb things in the minor leagues because you know it's just it's cheesy, but that was dumb. 
and they came and like the social media person she was like what do you think of that i was like i think that was the stupidest thing i've ever seen in a baseball game like that was a legitimate waste of time we could have done so much better. we could have done like a beer chugging contest we could have done a cheese eating something like i said instead you had a, a fat cheese it running around tripping and falling letting the fan win i was like can we have an original thought just once like not try and copy the freeze like can we just one original thought <laughs> they do they have the sausage race yeah the sausage race. yeah is that great. was like and, and then they're trying way too hard sausage race is cool I used have to you try gotten water. into a sausage have you gotten into a sausage yet no i don't know if i'd fit to be which honest. one well if you could would you be which one would you be which one do you think i'd be chorizo i figured i love where your head's at mm-hmm. i mean that's what's exactly an original about. idea give yeah, me, it's, give me no, something because it's, it's mexican it's because it's mexican it's cool but i would have gone there too <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I'm Polish. I would have been the Polish. That's just yeah. What, That's what, what I said. I do. love where your head's at. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, those are like those are the subtle chirps that nobody really gets. They're like, oh yeah, Teresa. That's cool. Like maybe because he's brown. No, not because it's just he's Mexican. But I liked it. That's those are the good ones. Well, you, last time we had when we had you on, you were playing for Team Mexico. You were talking about tequila and fiesta. So I figured chorizo, mixing chorizo, tequila, fiesta. You got a hell of a fiesta. Yeah, yeah. Then we get some queso fundido dip or something. You know. In the middle. <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah. All right, so last thing, Raddy, before you jump, give me one original idea that you would want to implement if you were head of marketing. I would do like a, I would do something like uh, maybe you, t- you, you chug a beer, then you do the old spin around head on the bat, put on some drunk goggles, make a run for it, and try and cut cheese. Like cut a piece of cheese at the end, eat it, and then have to run through a line. That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> be so many Might lawsuits for place some so- ACLs at the end, but it'll be good. Not to mention, you need a knife to cut the cheese, and you spun around, chugged a beer, and, and have the goggles on. The, the, the yeah. and so. You could still lose a finger and win. It's just how bad do you want it. <laughs> the ultimate waiver would have to be signed. I was going to say, I can only game. imagine the waiver. Never, never. Yeah. MLB yeah. can't even show a sign saying sell the team in Oakland. Do you think they're going to allow that? Yeah. Oh, I, you know what? I I, uh, I turned on the TV, and I was watching uh, some highlights in the basketball games, and that popped up on, on ESPN, and I was like, that's brutal. That they had to turn that and, like, edit it, and they couldn't have it on TV. I was like, that's that's not cool. No, it's just no. Wait, does the do the Brewers go to Oakland this year? Do you guys go to Oakland this year? No, they come to us. Oh darn! I was gonna I, I was gonna make sure we talked to you after. I wanted the full report on the Oakland Coliseum when you went there. Dude, I've I've played in the Coliseum. Um, for the first time I ever played in the Coliseum, it was the first time I'd ever played on the West Coast, as a as a in general and just in pro ball since high school, and um, I had. We played four games, and I had 350 people at each game. So you had Play half the stage. Yeah, they had. we had two sections sold out. My dad called him. was like, hey, you know, my son's playing. We're from the – you know, it's the closest he's been. We're like an hour and 20 minutes away. Um, can I buy a couple sections? They're like, yeah, and they were like $7 a ticket. And so oh, we had a bunch of family, a bunch of friends, and it was just like – it was crazy. We had like a big cookout after the game. The cops kicked us out. <laughs> um yeah we're in the parking lot just having a good time like not doing anything wrong and cops kicked us out i thought like maybe they thought we were illegal or something but we all had documentation so we were good <laughs> <laughs> i forgot bay area like you're yeah. there so are you an ace fan growing up or no he was Gi- giant no. No, i was a giants fan dude yeah uh, i told but, you i asked for your autograph at a game when i was a kid and you told me to fuck off there's no way i said that but maybe yeah maybe i got the problem heights Hey, real quick, last one. Before that, before, like, all along those lines, I train at Matt Kemp's gym in the offseason in Texas. And uh, so I have really – I had really long hair when Matt was, like, in his prime out there in L.A. And uh, I, I started a rumor in the gym, and it sounds super true. I was like, yeah, I was, like, 10 years old, and, you know, I showed up to a Giants game early, got into batting practice, and the Dodgers are taking batting practice, and – Matt was on, on pace to win the MVP, and I went down there. I was like, Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim, can you sign my ball? And he said, not now, fat Jesus. I'm not going to sign. <laughs> and, like, everybody believed it. They were like, Matt, why? Is this real? And, I, and Matt was like, no. And I was like, yeah, it is. Dude. And I showed him the picture of me as a kid, and they were like, this sounds real. This sounds like something Matt would do. 
And I was I, like, I you mean, know what? It's a, it's a good rumor to start, and it, it really is, but it wasn't true. But hey, it was Giants fans. Like that. Giants fans don't need any more reason to hate me, Rowdy, so we don't need to pile on the they don't, they don't hate true you, dude. stories. I, they don't hate you. There's a Giants jersey in the background. You're just trying to win them over again. No, that's Bonds, though. That's Bonds. They like Bonds. Oh. They love Bonds. They know. Know. What yeah, number did you wear there? It's retired. We can't talk about it. Yeah. 36. 36, Gaylord Perry. Yeah. Good. He was good, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I, I played with Matt Kemp. I could see him also doing something like that after having played with him. He could definitely say, fuck off, bad Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, that, see, I didn't know you played with him. Were you in Atlanta? In Atlanta, yeah. Yeah, see, now like that you played with him, it sounds real. <laughs> it also sounds like something I would do, so that's kind of why I said <laughs> I didn't say that. Well, maybe I did say that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, dude. I, I, I'll, I'll send you an autographed ball now from Kratz. It'll make up for it. <laughs> Good. There, there it is. Right there speed on it. there it is. Come full circle. Ratty, great catch, catching up, dude, and uh, enjoy those appointments, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, all right? Well, sounds good. Thanks for having me again, guys. Brewers broadcaster Jeff Levering joining us right now on Brew Crew territory. Very excited to have him with us. And Kratzy, this is one of your boys, right? This is a guy. I mean, guy. While, while while he's not a guy as much as you know others because he's got a snapback on backwards, like he's showing off that incredibly perfect hairline. Mm. Lev is an absolute beast out there. <laughs> Kratzy, you're the best, man. Thank you. It's only because you were, I think you joined us on the radio broadcast for the first time as your like broadcast debut, if I'm not mistaken. That's the only reason you're saying nice things about me. Yeah, no, it's 100% true. We were in the, yeah. uh, this was my debut in spring training. Counts was like, yeah, these are the six days you're going to have off. And then I talked to you and I talked to you and they were like, yeah, come on up. And I was like, all right, that." Sounds sweet. And I just got to go up there and chat on the radio. So everything I know about talking on the radio, it's from this guy. Yep. Oof, man, that's a lot of pressure. That's a real <laughs> lot of pressure, Eric. Come on, man. Yeah. You can't lay that on me. It's there. We, we need okay. more of that, by the way. Yeah. Day off, just hop up in the booth, hang out with Jeff. That would be great. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, let me ask you about the ball club. So what have you liked and not liked from the first month of the season? And I would love for you to also include the division as a whole because you got to kick the Cardinals while they're down. Well, I'm not going to kick the Cardinals. They're they're struggling. I mean, as much as it you know, it's fun to kind of mess around with St. Louis, and they've they've had great teams over the last you know, decade plus. Um, you know, they're going through a tough patch. They had a really tough road trip out to the West Coast, where they only won two games out of their ten. Brewers went on the same West Coast trip, went to Arizona, San Diego, Seattle, ended up going seven and three. So, uh, you know, the Brewers are playing pretty good baseball, the kind of team baseball wise, and to do it without a guy like Brandon Woodruff, who probably not going to pitch in the big leagues until at least the end of June is what it sounds like now. Corbin Burns is starting to figure it out a little bit. Freddie Peralta has been unbelievable. Um, the bullpen has quietly been kind of a, a stabilizing force with Devin Williams at the back and Peter Strzelecki in the eighth inning. Uh, and, and the energy that that the young kids are bringing to the table, I think, is, has been really good. Uh, unfortunately, to see Garrett Mitchell go down for the season, hurt himself in Seattle with the, uh, the torn shoulder situation going on there. Uh, but Joey Weimer has been great. I think Bryce Terang defensively, he could be a potential gold glove winner this year at the position. He's just played it at such a high level uh, for being a rookie. But I, I think that those young guys, and Crash, you could speak on this too, when you have young guys that are in your clubhouse, I think it energizes everybody. It, it gives you this this new sense of, okay, well, these guys are doing it. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to get my work done. You see Christian Yelich out in the outfield working hard with Quentin Berry every day to try and be a little bit better out and left, and it's paid off. He's played a really good left field so far. And I think a lot of that comes from the energy of the young kids too. We're not going to rip on the Cardinals, but the Brewers did sign one of the Cardinals, in my opinion, one of the reasons the Cardinals are kind of been down a little bit this year. Tell me what he's done behind the plate, what William's done behind the plate coming over here, just jumping right into the Walker McNevin, whatever you want to call it, the, the freaking catching guru of the central Midwest nation of Wisconsin. Yeah, the, the catching program that the Brewers have put together here over the last few years has been 
remarkable. I mean, it starts with Charlie Green, who's down in the minor leagues. and was a roving field co uh, coordinator for a number of years. And then now he's kind of overseeing all of the catching department. And Murph has his hands on it a little bit. And Nestor Corridor and Walker McKinvin, too. You know, William Contreras was a, a below average catcher last year. But he had the opportunity to to sit next to Travis Darno is one of the great pitch presenters in all of baseball, a great blocker, great caller of the game. So he he had a little bit of a base coming in. And as soon as the Brewers traded for William, I mean, he he went to work. And he has become one of the one of the great strike stealers in all of baseball. And it's not a ton of the, you know, grab and snatch back into the zone and all the stuff that, that you see a lot of, especially with his brother Wilson. But I mean, it's just a it's a smooth style of catching it feels like and he's got a great throwing arm he's more athletic behind the plate than people give him credit for he's had a great approach at the plate he's hitting above 300 at least he was a couple days ago uh the power hasn't quite got there yet but he, it's been a seamless transition for him to be a, a below average defensive catcher to become wanting uh, one of the best defensive catchers in baseball according to the metrics this season it's been great to watch him and he's got a fun pitching staff to to try and coordinate with as well which is just crazy to me, Jeff, that it's happened so quickly with him. Yeah. And we know it's plug and play. Oh, this guy's going to Milwaukee. He's immediately going to be a better catcher, and he'll continue to improve. Just right away, grading out already as one of the better framers to have that kind of turnaround. And I know he's a young ball player. The question I have is, this league is so good at being a copycat league that if something's going on, like, hey, we talked about sweepers the last couple of years, and especially with some of the teams like the Yanks and the Dodgers trying to get every pitcher to throw the pitch, and then all of a sudden the whole league takes it over. How come no, can, no one can replicate what the Brewers are doing with their catchers? I think it's just as part of the teaching style, Scott, to be honest with you. And you got to have people buy into it. I mean, Omar Narvaez, again, going back a couple of years when the Brewers got him from Seattle, below average catcher and offensive only type of guy. And he became one of the great catchers in baseball. He's done a nice job with the Mets defensively and his offense is kind of gone in the tank, but at the same time, he's a great defensive catcher. Victor Caratini could say the same thing. Um, he, he was Hugh Darvish's personal catcher uh, for a number of years, Chicago and San Diego. And now he's, he's been great as a, a number two guy. And if something happens with Wilson, or William Contreras, he can jump right in there just as he did with Omar last season. But I don't know if there's a secret sauce to, to be honest with you. I don't know what it is, but you know, our guys work so hard at learning what works and how umpires, more importantly, how umpires call strikes and what they like looking at and how pitches are presented. And I think that that's kind of the basis of where they start their instruction with these catchers. Hey, listen, what are umpires going to call? Why are they going to call it this way? Okay, well, let's teach our guys to catch this way and anticipate in a specific situation. So I, that's where I think it all starts and stops. Uh, for the Brewers and, and how they've been able to, to bring all these guys in and see the results that they've seen. So basically you're saying since 2018, the defensive <laughs> catchers have just been unbelievable. Thank you. You don't have to respond to that. It well, is... you and Manny Pena set the bar so high, Kratzy. That's, that's what we did. That's what we did. Yeah. The pineapple came, The pineapple <laughs> elevated my game, so I really put it all on Manny P. But really, when we're talking about elevating stuff, Who's winning in the race? Because it's a big thing. It's Voigt, Winker, or Rowdy. Who's winning in the race? Because I have the answer. It's on StatCast. Who wins in the, the three-legged race? Or are they running on both feet? Or <laughs> Okay. So, I, I mean, the eye test tells me that Winker should win that race. But I'm sure the, the analytics will tell you differently. I bet you Voight analytically wins that race just because he scored from first base on a ball down the left field line in San Diego. What do you got? It is. It's Voight, then Rowdy, then Winker. So, Ooh, no, no man. Tough, tough year so far for Winker. Man, he's, a little bit, he's about a mile per hour slower than he has been in his career. So if he can bump that up, but you heard it here first, that analytically <laughs> – okay. But the eye test, that feels like it's kind of like just because the big guys. Big guys can be fast too, Jeff. Don't it can't. They can't. We had a great moment in the ball game yesterday where a uh, pitcher picked over at, at Rowdy standing at second base and, and picks back at him. And Rowdy kind of looked over at the third base coach, Jason Lane, and goes, why, why is he picking over at me? I don't get this. And then we kept the camera shot on him, and he points at his belly and goes, I'm fat. 
So it was one. It was just a great moment on TV. I laughed. Rock was laughing because we're all reading the lips. And uh, he goes, "Why are you picking over here? I'm fat, man. I don't get it. Why? Why? What's the point?" Uh, Rowdy is an absolute gem, and apparently one yeah. of the best combos over at first too. So the crew looked good though this this past weekend. You don't want to, in my mind, play the Angels at this time of year because they deal with a ton of injuries usually, and also not great pitching depth. But right now, it's it's pretty much there. They take two out of three. So the, the way I want to finish this is got a month of baseball, brew crew looking really good. What's on your wish list? Because as broadcasters, we can do whatever the hell we want, right? And you can go anywhere on the board here. I'll just like give you some options. But I mean, it could be based off the weaknesses for the team to keep it simple. It could be you just saw Otani. Maybe he's a trade candidate and he's the next like CC Sabath that it comes in and takes over the city. Or it could go down to the to the farm system and look at Jackson Cheerio getting called up early. What, what do you want to do if you can do anything in a couple months from now? No, I'm keeping Cheerio on the minor leagues. I, 19 years old, I want to make sure that he can dominate a level. He's going to be in double-A hopefully all season. If he does an, an insane job, he'll be up in triple-A by the end of the season. Uh, I, if it's me, I try and trade for a little bit of outfield depth. I mean, Joey Weimer's a great player out in center field, but you got to have a, another bat in there. Tyrone Taylor's on his way back, so maybe he'll help out. Um, you know, the, the situation with Brian Anderson playing right field and at third base, I think it's working very well. But if you can just plug him into one spot – and have him be successful in one area, I think that that would benefit this team as well. You try and figure out what you do with third base, potentially. Luis Urias is going to be back with his hamstring injury. Um, and if you get out of starter, I think that that's always a good thing too. Uh, again, Brandon Woodruff making his way back. He's a, a huge arm to get back in this rotation. Uh, you can never have enough depth. I mean, nobody's going through a season with five starters anymore, let alone six. So starting pitching depth and maybe some outfield is where I would look first. So you don't want Otani? Like <laughs> I would love Otani. Dude, I, I would love Otani. Believe me, I love watching that guy play. He's a freaking unicorn. Uh, but the chances of him coming to Milwaukee are, I mean, that's a, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. I'm, I'm, I, I love the fantasy world that we're living in, but mm -hmm. I'm also a realist. Yes. No, that's fair. Yeah. Signing there is one thing. Trade, hey, it's a good farm system. You never know. Yeah, you you're know. right. I don't think he's getting traded, but but if he does, he doesn't get he doesn't have any no trade clause. He doesn't get to pick yeah. where he goes. Just, 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 like, yeah, it's just true. like just like my one just like my one of my friends said. What's all this one in a million talk, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Afraid of Felcher from Cranston, of course. Yeah. <sighs> Saying there's a chance. Jeff, I mean, awesome chance. having you. We appreciate you, man. Great to uh, catch up on this ball club. You got it, guys. Anytime. Great to see you. Jeff, we appreciate the time, man. We'll talk to you again down the road. And we had a little combo with your Brewers broadcast teammate, Vinny Rettino, about this team as well. Let's run that. Member of the Grinder Club, former big leaguer. As you can see, you know who he works for. You know what, what he's doing pre and post and during games, too. Vinny, how you doing, man? Great, guys. How you guys doing? I just realized the studio behind me is not up to par right now. Brian Anderson came, came over to my house, the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers, and spent like half a day here and made this for me. So this was like a year ago. But anyway, it's not up to snuff right now. Brian did that? Play by play. Yeah, B.A. did that. Let's, let's get that over there. Yeah, B.A. Yeah. No and Dom Catrono. You know Dom. I know you know Dom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. So. No, I do. That's crazy. Those guys came over and did it. I would have thought like somebody, you know, like stage manager or a designer or something. These guys know how to set that up. I would never this be able to This is my do basement. That. Yeah, this is my basement in beautiful Racine, Wisconsin. Yes. Yes. Congrats I love it. Think. Love that. This is my basement. I love We're it. Both in I the love basement. that. Yes. And Brock, yours too. That's not a bad little setup as well. This is a, yeah, yeah. I'm over here in the corner. I'm I'm in the I'm tucked back in the corner. I got some more cool jerseys. I should obviously I should have put my Brewers one back here. Yeah, no but, doubt. But I I had to sh I I got to show off the Butterfield man. He's my favorite of all time. So <laughs> oh, yeah, but him. you need more Brock. You need more behind. You need to invite uh, well, Brian Anderson over. I'll um I, I'll move I'll move the set around um every time I host. I've got jerseys hanging up all over the place, but. But Butterfield, he's in he's in prime position. Oh, look at that! I'm pointing the wrong wrong side. He's in prime position right right by the TV. So whenever I'm watching TV, I can just look over and think about Butter. Nice. He's gonna start getting royalties on that. Hey, Vinny, before we get into some Brewers talk, which team that you played for did you associate with the most? And I have a follow up here. 
Uh, I mean, it's the Brewers, right? I, I, from Racine, just south of Milwaukee, I played uh, at UW Lacrosse, a small Division three school in Wisconsin, and then I ended up getting signed by my you know boyhood team that I grew up idolizing, you know, Robin Yell, Paul Molitor. So I had a chance to play for them and get signed by the Brewers right away and then get a chance to play in the big league. So it's definitely the Brewers. So, so this isn't a setup because I, I just want to see maybe you have the ability to change this, especially if you say this live on digital television, essentially. Your photo in baseball reference, it's a great photo. You got the, the great smile going. Is in a Mets cap. It's almost like the yep. Hall of Fame talk. Like, where do you, where do you want to go in as? Right, uh, right. The Grinder Hall of Fame. Where would yeah, I get inducted? The Grinder Hall of Fame BB rep has you as a Met, and I was like, nah, he's more of a brewer to me. Yeah, no, I mean, the Mets gave me, and, and Terry Collins, they gave me, a like, a real opportunity to play and contribute to a major league roster. When I was with the Brewers, I mean, I loved it. It was a dream come true to play for my hometown team. It was kind of more like a pat on the back. Hey, great minor league season. Come on up here in September and sit on the bench and eat big league spread for a month, you know. So that's kind of like how my call-ups were for the Brewers. And then grinded, you know, tried to figure some things out. I could really hit left-handed pitching. Terry Collins brought me up and said, hey, man, we need you to actually play first base. He's like, so I played first base. For the New York Mets, when Ike Davis couldn't hit left-handed pitching, so that's that's kind of uh, the story there. And it, I do kind of feel more a little more connected just in terms of a major league roster when I was with the Mets, just because it's like, okay, you got to help us win now. So that was that was kind of cool. Ike Davis couldn't hit a curveball either, but he <laughs> mashed everything else. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so. What I want to get into, you said B.A. was over there. B.A. was actually in town? Like, he was actually like, – Oh, right. No, he wasn't on assignment doing some national broadcast somewhere for, you know, the bas- for basketball or college basketball. So, he was definitely in town. I think it was it was – it was his downtime. He's like, look, look what happens when I have some downtime. I'm over at your house putting together a studio for eight hours. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's doing, he's doing so much – do you ever get to work with him or are you usually filling in for him? No, no. I, so I'm not a, so he does play by play. God, I, Scott tip my cap to you guys for able, for being able to do play by play. I, we're just, I'm just talking baseball off the cuff, kind of, you know, doing color analysis in the booth and then I'm doing the pre and post game show, but I have worked with BA last year. I did 10 games in the booth last year. I did uh, eight, uh, six of those with BA and then four of those with Jeff Levering. And so uh, I'll get – I'm getting about 40 games in the booth this year, all on the road. Bill Schroeder, Rock, the the normal analyst for the Milwaukee Brewers, he's kind of weaning off road games. And so Tim Dillard and I are, are filling in there and doing the road games. So I'll be working with B.A. a little bit and Jeff Levering. And how are you liking that? How is that Love it. different from, like, grinding it out in the minor leagues to make it to the big leagues? Yeah. No, it is – yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like – um, you know, getting your opportunity in the big leagues. Although I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you, Kratzy, it's it's way more fun than playing for me. Just because playing was such a grind, and I loved playing. I, I they had to rip the jersey off of me. You know that. And um, I just the opportunity just to to talk baseball, to really dig in on baseball, dig in on players. I scouted after I was done playing, so I scouted for four years after I was done playing, and that I loved doing that. This is like scouting, but now I kind of have a voice and I feel like, you know, um, you know, you don't really have to worry about getting players right or wrong like you do in scouting. You don't have to worry about going 0 for 4. I guess you got to worry about going 0 for 1 if you have a bad game in the booth. But uh, I I do really enjoy it. That doesn't even matter, Vinny, if you have a bad game in the booth. Take it from me. Nothing actually really (laughs) happens to you. Maybe some fans send you some mean shit, but they do that every day anyway. So it really doesn't make a difference. You could be like, I had the game of my life. And then I'd look and they'd be like, oh, you're terrible. Uh, You're you're rooting against my team or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And you're not terrible. I'm so concerned about your team. Yeah. You're great. Uh, You're great. Thank you. You guys have a great team, by the way. And I mean that like with the whole roster. Like obviously BA is a legend. Um, Levering's a stud. Uh, yeah. the, on the on your side with you and Dillard, like rising stars as well. So really enjoy listening to you guys that. quite often. We have our, the first ever regional um, podcast that we came out with under the Foul Territory brand is Brew Crew Territory. So we know there is a very devoted fan base out there that wants to get yeah. more Brewers content. So let's dive into that for a moment and yeah. we'll run some of this during that pod. 
overall take on the brew crew right now and our Brewers fans laughing at the turmoil in St. Louis. Definitely laughing at the turmoil in St. Louis. I got to tell you, as much as Brewers fans and myself included kind of dislike Cubs, the Cubs, and not necessarily the Cub fans because they're very charming and I actually love going to Wrigley. But, yes, uh, we actually dislike the Cardinals fans a little bit more just because there's a little bit of an air of, you know, superiority about their and, and, and maybe rightfully so just because they've been so good and they have such a storied tra- tradition and we're maybe a little bit, you know, striving for that in, here in Milwaukee. But, yes, everyone is taking very good pleasure, a lot of pleasure in the fact that the Cardinals are struggling right now and their pitching does not look good. Uh, you know that they'll turn it around, but you definitely want to – all the teams in the Central are probably thinking, okay, let's build a, a big enough lead against the Cardinals because you know that they'll be charging come second half. They always do. Yeah, with the with the Cardinals being at the bottom of the barrel, and then and then you've got the Pirates leading the charge right now, playing yeah. good baseball. What I mean, obviously nobody saw that that coming. You know, we expected Cardinals, Brewers, um, yeah. Cubs are even playing playing better, but it, it seems like that division is on the up. I tell you what, and it's almost fun a, a little bit to watch from afar. Not if the Brewers are playing the Pirates, but I mean, I I think you guys would agree. Like, it's fun to follow what the Pirates are doing right now. You know, I, I don't know how sustainable this is just because I just question whether whether or not they have the depth at starting pitching to sustain this. But it's certainly not a team, especially an offensive group, that's going to be at the bottom of the, the league in terms of production, in terms of scoring runs. And so I think that they're going to probably stick around for a little bit. I just I just question whether or not they're going to be able to sustain like this level of winning percentage for the long haul, just because of their starting pitching depths a little bit thin, but Mitch Keller looks like the real deal. Like everything that everyone thought he would be coming out of the draft even and coming over in that trade. So um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens with those Pittsburgh pirates, but they're fun to watch. What do the brewers have to do to sustain this? What do the brewers have to do to make it? And you can't say anything about injuries. That's, you know, what do they have to do and do they have enough to sustain this? Um, I I do believe that they do. It, and here's Kratzy, here's the I mean you 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 played for him. They have Craig Council, right? I mean, so this this guy is is building a culture, a winning culture year in and year out. And that that it doesn't show up on any data and analytics, any metric. What's there's nothing for it. it you guys know, you guys played. It's it matters when you have a group of guys that are all in it together with one common goal every single day is is to win a ball game. And so when you have a Craig Council that facilitates that and fosters that every single day, uh, I I think that that is going to equate in, you know, a winning season. And I don't know whether or not the Brewers are going to win the Central. It certainly feels like they will. It feels like they have the starting pitching depth. It feels like they have the position player group to kind of do it. They don't have you know, a roster full of guys like Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, speaking of the Cardinals, just in terms of like lineup anchors, I call those guys that are just going to just mash every single day. I don't think they have that, but they have guys that'll contribute every day. They have guys that play hard. The new kids, so fun to watch. Joey Weimer, Bryce Terang, these kids add something to that lineup. And then, like I said, the, the, the Craig Council, like winning culture feel of this group feels like it's going to be sustainable all year round. And it'll be a battle for sure. It's going to be a tough NL central this year. Um, but I think they'll, they'll be able to pull it off. I've been trying to bang the drum on the whole council thing. Cause he's in his last year. Like it's hard to try to, do you guys do like a pregame meeting when you're, you know, when you're in, when you're on the road and you're in the booth. So take us, try to take us into that meeting and give us something that would like explain to you why Craig Council is what he is. Because I've been trying to explain it and give examples, but from you, somebody that's there all the time in a different way, different season than from when I played, explain to the fans what what he does. Yeah. So, I mean, you just have to you have to be in it to know exactly what we're talking about and feel it. But it, it's just the idea, like, okay, so once you get the ball rolling during a season where it's like a snowball rolling down the hill. Right. And so as that snowball gains momentum, it gets bigger. And the guys that don't want to be part of it, 
they either get out of the way or get gobbled up by it. Right. So we've been on teams where that happens every single year where all of us like there's like, oh, we got this guy on our team. I heard about this guy. And all of a sudden he's like a great team guy because it is that culture that is built within. And, and um, you know, there's multiple examples of that. I don't want to disparage any teammates of the past, but that they, you never thought that they would be team guys until they were part of a winning group like that. And all of a sudden they became team guys. And once you have 20, it's 26 guys now that are all in it to win and they don't care about their personal accomplishments or their numbers or their contract the next year. When, when you have a group of guys like that, not only does the team win, but those individuals actually play better. And if you get, you know, if you play better, then obviously you're going to win more. So it's just everyone doing their own job with one common goal in mind. And, and, and Craig council facilitates that better than anybody, you know, he's, He's been there, done that. I guess you would have to flip a coin between him and Tito, right? Tito Francona for me. But yeah. um, Craig, Craig Council is is certainly right at the top of the list there. So Craig Council, um, Crassy just said it's Craig's last year. So he's yep. he's getting fired. He's getting fired at the end of the year. Is that, <laughs> no, well, we hope that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about how good he is. And Crassy's over here saying it's his last year. We're, tr- we're trying to extend the guy, right? Last year of his contract. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I, yeah, I'm. I'm sure they're probably working something out. They know his what his value is. I, I don't know. You know, I don't want to speculate anything on that front. Um, but uh, yeah, everyone wants him back. I, he's from 20 minutes away from the ballpark, right? Um, it, it's funny because the joke about council is because he, what he cuts his own grass every day, right? So he's not going to want to go anywhere else, at night, or every week, he's not going to want to go anywhere else. Have someone else cut his grass, so. He's a, he's a cheeser. He's a cheese head, just like the rest of us. Okay, I want to go back to the Cardinals question just for a sec, because I know Brewers fans are just loving what's going on there, and it might not last, like you said. I don't think the Cardinals are going to be like a fourth or fifth place team. But how deep down the Brewers rotation do you have to go before you say that wouldn't be the number one starter on the Cardinals? Ooh. Uh, ooh. Play the game. I, I guess. Go one I guess. by one. I get okay. So Burns obviously would be the number one starter. Brandon Woodruff, he is dinged up with his shoulder. He would be the number one starter. Freddie Peralta, all, th- all three of those names that I just said would be the number one starter on pretty much every other team, right? So, um, well, no, not every other team. Well, not I mean, every. They're team. not starting. Not, not the you know, I got Degrom yeah. starting for the Rangers tonight. Right. But look at the Cardinals. Like to me, I've been calling this out for a couple months now. Like they, they don't have a number one. Maybe not even a number two. No offense to them, but. I mean, the Brewers, right, we're already three deep here. Yeah. And we, Wade we've Miley. got a number one. I mean, Wade Miley would be the number one on the Cardinals right now, especially the way that he's been pitching. He would. I mean, he was this a he had he was a five win pitcher, you know, wins above replacement pitcher two years ago. He was dinged up last year for the Cubs. And even when he was healthy with the Cubs, he was outstanding last year when he was pitching. So um You'd have to go to Eric Lauer, and then, you know, Colin Ray is, is the guy that is filling in right now. But uh, Eric Lauer's been outstanding at times. Uh, Colin Ray's kind of establishing himself, himself at the big league level right now. Um, you know, Adrian Hauser is waiting in the wings. So you talk about depth. The Brewers have it, and the Cardinals don't seem to have it. Yeah, that's kind of what the Brewers are have been known for, right, you know, throughout the years is the depth in the starting pitching. I mean, I'm, I mean, I was there for – 47 seconds you know and, and yeah, yeah. Face, facing <laughs> those guys me. yeah for facing those guys in spring training you want to talk about feeling bad going into going into a season <laughs> or going into your your first spring training bats facing those guys i faced i faced brandon i faced devin williams mm-hmm. coming out of the bullpen and 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 this was before he this was 2020 so this was before he, ma- he had made his debut and he starts throwing that change up and i'm like what in the heck is that pitch he goes, it's a changeup. I said, if you throw that every single time, no one will ever hit it. And then he, you know, he ended up winning uh, Rookie of the Year that year. That but, was in 2020. Wow. Yeah, Brock, 2020. He owes yeah. his entire career I, to you. Seriously. I am, yes. I am, I am a, a Hall of Fame scout. <laughs> you I told are. Him, I, said, I said, throw the changeup, Devin. <laughs> And he did That's he listened awesome. to me and look at him. But no, I'm, I'm serious, man. The pitching is, I, I love those guys. I wish I told Kratzy this the other day. I wish my my Brewers career would have lasted longer because I loved everything about the Brew Crew. Yeah, 
and we liked having you here. And it's probably my fault that you were a Texas Ranger. Uh, so I put a big number on you, Brock, back in 2018. I scouted you when you were with the with the Red Sox. And, um, yeah, so it's probably my fault that year, a couple years later they sign you. Um, but anyway, that's I digress on that. But um, – <laughs> you were a hell of a player, man. I really enjoyed watching you play. But yeah, no, we would have twenty twenty. Let's see, you didn't you didn't get much opportunity. Three for thirty, um, and he was gone. Yeah. They yeah. they, they, DF, they, they DFA'd me on Council's birthday. It was so funny. They called me in the office. We were in Pittsburgh. They called me in the office. They said, "Hey, we're gonna have to we're gonna designate you for assignment." And it was Council's birthday. They went through the whole spill. I was like, "All right." I was like, "I I was ready to get the hell out of there anyway." Like I. COVID season sucked. It was brutal. Yeah, it sucked for like, everybody. I, my, my wife was pregnant. I'm trying to go home. Um, but it was yeah. Council's birthday. So whenever I left, oh, I, I said, hey, Counts, happy birthday, man. And I gave him a hug. So now every, every year on his birthday, I'll text him, happy birthday. And he'll go, hey, happy DFA uh, anniversary. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like Counts. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a good joke. But no, I, like funny. I said, man, I, I, I mean, I wasn't there for long, but I loved everything about it. Uh, I wish it would have worked out, but it didn't. And and uh but I, I still root for those guys yeah no it's a and that's and that's funny um about you know what you say about Devin Williams too because I believe that story that's how stuff happens right so um I shoot I'm not taking credit for Tommy Conley Canley but my last year catching and, and playing uh quite frankly it was 2016 I was in AAA and I was catching Tommy Canley I said throw your change up every single time and he's and he started to do it, and I'm not taking credit for his success. But certainly not. Data and analytics had figured that out, like throw the changeup. But that's how stuff happens. That really does. That really is a real uh, a thing. And now that nasty changeup from Devin Williams looks like a screwball, one of the nastiest pitches in baseball, if yeah, not I the mean, nastiest. We, we were all talking about it. I mean, he in inner squads. We're like, dude, what and how do you do that? Like, I've never seen a ball move that way. And the um, spin rate, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it spins. It spins so much. It, it is like a screwball. And guys hit one, 090 off his fastball last year, actually, because of the changeup, right? So everyone's ch- trying to sit well, back and sit on the changeup now. And so his fastball at 92, 93, no one can hit that now. It, it's just yeah, it's totally yeah, now, well, now it plays up. And, it, I mean, his yeah. fastball is good. He's got a good fastball, too. Yeah. But the changeup, I mean, you can know it's coming and still, I mean, I know. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Hey, Vinny, this was awesome. Really great to have yeah. you on. We appreciate it, and, and have fun. We'll be watching you on the TV. Yeah, no no doubt. Anytime you guys want me on, let me know. Kratz hats. What happened, man? Did you lose I your mean, hat? When we're, talking, when we're talking with our guy, Rowdy, and he's talking about the growing the bangs out, getting the U, I need it. I had to take the hat off, just like Rowdy took the hat off. No, it's perfect, okay? You got to switch things up. It's a long season. You don't want things to get monotonous. You know all about that. For this team, though, they're already back on the West Coast again. They got the Rockies and the Giants. I will say this. If you're going to go on the West Coast, give yourself an opportunity at least to pick on some shitty teams right now because that's what you're dealing with. Both of those teams are struggle cities, so a chance for the Brewers to increase their lead early on this season, and I have a feeling they'll need everything they can get. There's no way the Cardinals are going to be this down for the season, although I do think the Pirates come back down to earth pretty soon. Let's enjoy it while we got it, because the yes. Cardinals will start playing better. But a seven and three road trip last time out on the West Coast. Now they get to go play the Rockies and Giants. Just can't let off the gas. Get after them and come home with you know a solid four or five wins on that road trip would be sitting real nice to start May. Hell yeah, Brewers fans are having fun right now. They're tailgating. And if you listen to this podcast and you have a question for Kratzy or any of our guests, or you have a request for an upcoming Brew Crew guest, let us know. You can hit us on socials. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe to the Brew Crew Territory podcast all by itself on Apple or on Spotify. If you're listening right now, we are on YouTube, so you can watch this and you can watch Rowdy's big bald dome rival Kratzies right now. So that's it for this week's edition of Brew Crew Territory. Good luck to your Brew Crew this week. See you soon. Foul Territory fans, listen up. Our friends at BetMGM are running an MLB Bet $10, get $100 instantly promo with the bonus code SPICYMLB. Here's how it works. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your newly created account. Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android. 
place a pregame money line wager of at least $10 on any MLB team to win at standard odds price, and you will receive $100 in bonus bets instantly. If you sign up in Massachusetts or Ohio, you receive $200 in bonus bets. Use the bonus code SPICYMLB.